Hey guys, in this video we're going to be checking out the Cicada 180 4 inch drone. This is a company um, that's associated with AKK. It's actually, this model is actually sold at the AKK website. Uh, this company is called Litus RC. Um, I haven't heard of them before, they're kind of new. And this is a clone of the Vortex 180. I'm not exactly sure why they cloned the 180 and not the 150. I think the 150 was more popular as a 3 inch model. But essentially, it's got the same carbon and plastic design. It looks very, very similar, if not almost exactly the same as the Vortex 180. Although the I think the electronics and everything are different on this one because uh, this is a actually a newer model than the 180. The 180 has been around for a while, I believe. So I'm kind of surprised that they cloned this uh, so past the initial release date of the original 180. Because um, all the electronics in this are, are, are more, more modern than the one that's on the Vortex 180. So this comes in two editions. There's a basic edition and an advanced edition. Uh, the frame uh, is the same for both, but the components are a little bit different. I think you get a, a little bit better camera in the advanced edition. The uh, motors are better as well. Uh, on the, this is the advanced edition. I got uh, 1407 3500 kV motors on this one, so very nice motors. Uh, same props on both. And, the flight controller is different on the advanced version. You get a F4 uh, Omnibus flight controller with a Betaflight OSD, and uh, you also get a better video transmitter. It's a, um, I think it's a power switchable video transmitter. I believe it goes up to 600 milliwatts, and it uses smart audio for changing your bands and channels through the Betaflight OSD, which is pretty nice. The basic version only comes with a um, button switchable. Uh, video transmitter, so you have to use a button to change your band's channel and power. I believe the ESCs uh, and the PDB are the same for both models. Both models are plug and play, they don't come with a receiver, so I added this little, uh, little micro free sky receiver here on the back. Uh, they do provide a wire loom here and a, it plugs in right there. It's a little hard to see, but there's a plug right there. You just have to use some needle nose pliers to plug in the wire, and then I just soldered it onto my receiver here and use a zip tie to zip tied to the back one. That was pretty much it. It's, uh, uh, you, I believe this uh, port here is for PPM or SBUS, and if you use SBUS it's going to be UART1. So very easy to set up. Obviously you want to make sure you put on your uh, antenna here before you power it on. Uh, it has LEDs in the back here as well. I think uh, the Vortex 180 also does that. And then you uh, have a, was it, a little boot button here for the flight controller. On this side and then on this side here is the USB port. And this is a very interesting setup. The bottom plate here is actually a PDB. It has, a, it has some voltage regulators and stuff, some other components. And then there's a board that's on top of that. That's the flight controller. But the USB port is actually on the PDB. So it's kind of weird. So I think that these parts are kind of proprietary for this model. Um, but you know, I wouldn't worry too much about spare parts because this thing is dirt cheap. Uh, this is the, one of the cheapest uh, four-inch models I've ever seen. It's uh, eighty dollars, or about like say seventy-nine dollars and twenty cents for the uh, basic version. But I highly recommend getting the advanced version. It's a hundred and nine dollars and twenty cents, I believe. So you're paying about twenty-three dollars more, but you get a lot more for that extra money. And still at a hundred and nine dollars, this thing is uh, one-third the price of the original Vortex 180, and I think it flies really well. Now. As I said, it comes with an F4 CPU, it comes with Betaflight 324, I believe, the latest version pre-flashed on the board. It didn't come with any special settings, so I, was, I thought maybe they just flashed it, and I was going to tune in the field with the default PIDs, but it flew really well on the default PIDs. So sometimes, uh, you know, because Betaflight has a pretty wide envelope with the PIDs, you'll get a model that will just fly really well out of the box on, on basic PIDs. So, this model doesn't really require any tuning, so I, I actually got this in there really easily. I just uh, plugged, uh, uh, plugged, uh, plugged in my receiver here, bound it to my radio, and obviously uh, the props are already on. Put on the uh, video transmitter antenna, and that was it. I, I do have to use my own battery, and I used a 650 milliamp hour 4S uh, pulse battery, which uses an XT30 connector, and that was it. Uh, went and flew it in. Flew pretty decently, so uh, obviously there's not no tuning involved here, so obviously nothing for me to talk about. You can just uh, do the things I did here, get it in the air and go and fly it, and it flies pretty well. And for the money, the value is just off off the charts for me. I mean, for $109, uh, 
for something like this. Uh, it's basically throwaway drone here, and if you lose it or crash it, it's it's not really that much of a loss because it's so cheap. And it's a, it's a good flyer too for the money. I think that someone uh, that's a beginner that wants to get into drones for pretty cheap, this is not a bad option. It's not a super fast model, but um, it does have decent power. You can do acrobatics with it, and it flies pretty well. So go ahead and I'll show you some flight footage. Let me know if you guys have any questions about this model, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.